Hello and welcome to the iScope calculator video. We're on the iScopes.com landing page and to access the iScope calculator you can just click the iScope calculator tab at the top and it will redirect you to the iScope calculator web page. Right at the top here we have the instructions on how to use this calculator where you can expand the instructions by clicking on these two buttons on the bottom. And if we move forward, it will direct you to the start of where you put in some inputs for the iScope calculator. For the purpose of this session, we have an example uh, where we have the 3.25 inch clip with 4 inches of exterior insulation. And we're going to be using this when putting in our inputs for the iScope calculator. Uh, the project data at right at the top, you don't need to enter it in, but if you're generating a report in the end and you want a title, uh, you can enter in the information that you want here so that it is shown on the reports. For today, we're going to say project name is test one, locations in Toronto, Ontario, and we're going to be dealing with the east wall. To start off, we have the structural design method. Whether you're in the United States or in Canada, we do have different structural requirements. So if uh, since we're in Toronto, Ontario, we're going to stick with limit states design, but you can click on allowable stress design in the United States if it applies for your project. Uh, if you look at the project example on the right hand side here, we have four inches of exterior insulation and it's a mineral wool at R4.3 per inch. So we're going to stick with uh, four inches in this input with the 3.25 inch isoclip. And we scroll down the exterior insulation effectiveness is R4.3 per inch already at mineral wool. But you can slide this left and right depending on the type of insulation that you're using on your projects to get the effective R value that is specific for your wall assembly. Moving on to the next input, the back of wall we have here is a steel stud. So we're going to stick with that. Typically steel studs are at 18 gauge, but depending on your project requirements, you can change that. The other inputs shown here are uh, stud wall for woods, uh, concrete, whether it's masonry units or concrete slab. Uh, whether there's insulation in the cavity is the next input. There is no insulation in this cavity, so we're going to keep it as no, but you can just not change the inputs as necessary for your project. Currently, there's no thermal tape, but for additional thermal performance with the isoclip, if necessary, you can actually apply thermal tape between the subgirt and the isoclip to create a firm, further thermal break and improve the effect of R value even further. Uh, for the purpose of this example, we'll stick with no. On the right-hand side here, you can actually see the subgirt is horizontal. It's this L angle that's attached to the isoclip. So we're going to click with horizontal for this project example. And uh, we'll stick with 16-inch uh, uh, horizontal spacing. This is typically based on your stud spacing as you have to install the ice clip into the stud. Uh, 24 inches is typically used for concrete, uh, but sometimes studs are spaced at 24 inch in center. And in some scenarios, you can actually install the ice clips every other stud, which is why 32 inch is also an option here. For the cladding dead loads, uh, for the project example, it actually shows here it's four pounds per square foot. So we can actually slide this bar to four pounds per square foot. But again, depending on your project requirements, you can slide it to the option that's necessary. For vertical spacing, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to stick with 36 inch for now and move on to the next section. Uh, we are going to consider girts in this calculation, so I have this as yes, and I'm going to stick with 18 gauge for now. And at the top right here, you have a summary of the results, which actually follows along with you as you scroll up and down the ISOCOP calculator. And it's very helpful because it updates automatically as you change your inputs. Uh, so let's say, for example, we want to find out how we can improve the effect of R value from R17 to something better. Uh, one example is you can change the type of insulation you use. So if we want to go from mineral wool to uh, XPS, we're now going to an R5 per inch. And the maximum possible effect of R value is increased to R19. You could also potentially add thermal insulation tape between the isoclip and the subgirts, which further thermally breaks your system. So if I click on yes here, this now moves to R20, for example. Other thing you can find out is uh, determine if you can improve the maximum specified wind load based on your governing components. 
So if I click on, let's say, GERD orientation is vertical, you'll notice that the governed component is now the subgert. So what that means is the GERT is the governed component of the specified wind loads. Uh, so if you decide to increase the GERD gauge from 18 gauge to 16 gauge, the maximum specified wind load has now increased to 62 pounds per square foot. And the governed component is now the bracket to substrate connection, which is the connection of the fastener is attaching the ice clip to the steel stud. And if you want to consider a subgird system that's not an L angle, let's say a Z bar, or if you want to um, use a heavier gauge than 18 gauge or 16 gauge, you can actually remove the consider the girts and do your own engineering calculations where that is no longer a part of the calculation and just considers the maximum specified wind load of the ice clip itself. On the right hand side here you'll see some graphs. The purpose of this is to show different outputs without having changed the inputs based on different wall assemblies. So here you'll see, based on different insulation depths, how it affects the maximum wind load. Uh, so as the insulation depth increases, the maximum load decreases. And if you actually hover over any of these points, it will show you a summary of the inputs that have resulted in these data points. Uh, this is based on the structural capacity graph. Next graph here shows how, based on your vertical spacing increasing, your maximum wind load decreases. And finally, your thermal performance, how as your insulation depth increases, your effective R value also increases. But something that's also interesting about this graph is as your vertical spacing or your spacing in general increases, your effective R value increases because you have less clips on the wall, which is more cost effective, but also has less penetrations to the insulation and improves the overall effective R value. If you're looking for some further data, you can also refer to the span tables. Uh, if you click on this, it'll open up a table which brings up a large variety of different outputs based on the different dead loads and spacing in a table format instead of in the calculator. The calculator is just summarizing in an easy to use format what is shown on these tables. If we scroll up a little bit, there are also some design assumptions and methodology, and these actually show you what what was put in, what effort was put in to actually generate the outputs that are shown in the the calculated report. So if we go through the structural span tables, uh, it will go over all the design assumptions methodology used for the structural calculations, including the pullout resistance for the fasteners what type of design assumptions were used for limit states design, allowable stress design, what codes were referred to, and the summary of where the forces are acting on the isoclip. Uh, there's also a summary of the thermal tape performance, which goes over the effective R values that you get with the thermal tape, and what modeling procedures were used when determining the R values for that specific assembly. You can also generate a report which summarizes all your inputs and your outputs by clicking, by putting in your information here. Uh, if you've entered in your information in the past, you can just regenerate the principal reports. And it comes up with a report summary that looks like this. So going back to the data inputs that you put in, I had East, Test 1, and Toronto, so that's shown at the top of this report. And it summarizes um, all the parameters that you've entered in on, in the first section, and it shows your results in the bottom here, showing your maximum possible effective R value, your wind, your uh, maximum wind load, your clip spacing, all of that shown in the summary, including some of the, the graphs that we described earlier. And this can be used part of your submittal, submittal package along with the uh, load tables if necessary, or any of the data assumptions and methodology if you really want to dive into the results that were provided within this calculator. If you're into estimating, then you can actually enter in your wall width and heights, and that will end up spitting out a very approximate number of clips uh, for the your project. So if I put in 100 feet by 33 feet, you need roughly 740 clips uh, based on your 16 inch by 36 inch clip spacing. 
Now, as you change your clip spacing, let's say one with 24 inches, you'll see this automatically updates as well. If you are looking for anything in metric, there is an option to go with metric at the bottom. If you click on metric, you can have both imperial and metric or just metric, and it shows all the results and the inputs in both measures of uh, unit measures. Finally, if you have any questions, want to go over the calculator, go over any of your reports, or have any general iSclip inquiries, feel free to call us at 1-844-740-2050, or you can email us at info at isoclips.com, or feel free to click on the Contact Us tab on the website and fill in the contact form, and we will reach out to you as soon as possible. I hope you were able to learn something through this video. Have a great day.